Uh, we're just going to do a, another uh, CNC conversion on an MH28B mill, uh, which is basically the same procedure as what we used on the HM48 and the HM46. Uh, first of all, we grab our plate. Uh, we use this as a drill guide. So we've drilled this to suit the original uh, pattern on here. Uh, what we find a lot with the Chinese mills is these patterns are done by hand. They put the flange on and then drill and tap it. So they don't always line up exactly right, about by a couple of millimeters. If you find that you have a bolt that doesn't line up properly when you do this up, it's not critical. Like that one there is a bit tight, so we're not going to try and force that one. Uh, you're only using this as a guide, so everything's in the same spot. What you're looking for critically is this to be level here with this and down about one millimeter. And then what we're going to do next is this hole here has to be moved down. So we get our hole saw and we put that in here. We use this for a guide only and then we gently go through it. After we've got our centre hole done, we get a drill and mark the position of these. Then we drill and tap these four for M6. Uh, being cast iron, these tap very easily. Just do it nice and slow and be patient. Keep it nice and square. And then just go around and do all four. Next we take our ball screw. Um, this one's actually been fitted on the wrong side for this. We actually want it around backwards. Um, now to get this off, we use a special sleeve. Put over the end, put some pressure on it and then wind the ball screw out. If you don't use a special sleeve, your ball bearings will come out and then you've got lots of troubles. So to put it back on, put it back in, hold some pressure on it, And then we wind our ball screw back on. Having that on backwards gives us our maximum travel at this end and our maximum travel this way so before it interferes with this. All right, now we've got our plate all bolted up. We get our ball screw, we put our ball screw adapter on loosely. Uh, we've got a fitting in here for a direct oiling system. Get our angular contact bearing. These are angular contact thrusts, not just a normal bearing. And this being a dry fitment, we just make putting everything together loosely, making sure everything fits. Making sure we've got clearance everywhere. Put our lock nut on. In this case, it's immediately obvious that the casting up this end is hitting on the ball screw. So we'll need to take a little bit off the end of that ball screw. Uh, all the castings are all variable, so 
that's nothing unusual. So we'll attend to that first before we go any further. I'll now get a marking pen and this marker I need to cut out. And we'll cut that out and come back. Clearance everything and make sure everything's running true. Uh, we've checked and we've got 240 mil of travel here. If we wanted to, we could come, come out here further and cut this piece here out and get another 25 or 30 mil. In this case, we're not going to because uh, it's already coming over 20 mil at the front um, we, after maximum rigidity, not maximum travel. Um, put the ball screw adapter on now. Make sure you lock tight it because so, it's not coming apart again. And they're all done up. Put that in. Put our angular contact bearing on again. And this time it's going on permanently, so we'll put some thread locker on it. You don't need huge amounts. Just as you're doing it up to support this. You notice this plate here is slightly loose. I don't do that up till I'm finished and run it through its full travel with on the machine. So we'll come back to that. Next we put our lock nut on. Now to do this up I normally put a coupling on. And that allows me to get a screwdriver in here and just put a moderate amount of tension on it. doesn't need huge tension, just a moderate. Make sure that all fittings in the right spot. And then just physically check by hand so you can run through the range of motions. Once the ball screw is all in place, we oil up this slide. Make sure it's well lubricated. All right, we put the gib in. And just loosely adjust it to start with. Then we put our ball nut screws in with a bit of Loctite. But initially leave them loose. Slightly nipped. And then we run it from one end to the other, just to centralise everything.
Now it's centralised, we nip them up. Just check it again. Tighten that gibbs up a little bit. And do a final tighten up. That centralizes everything. And then when we adjust our gibbs, we put adjust them to make sure they still run freely by hand and finally on the y-axis which we'd, we'd normally fit this earlier but because we were filming we didn't uh, we fit the motor mount plate on with our four M6 by 16 screws Now this could have been fitted back when we, after we drilled and tapped. But for filming it's in the way. Until then we leave it loose so it doesn't damage the threads. And re-tighten the lock nut up. and check everything still runs freely. The motors themselves simply go on. We put the motors on. We put our coupling on and the keyway, leave it loose. Put on the shaft and then put our four motor bolts in. And then once all four of those are done up tight, we centralise a coupler and tighten that up. Now we're done.